The kill switch feature finally arrives on Linux. Why is Surfshark removing these languages? And did this update fix the Windows application? Let's discuss. Hope everyone is doing good. Welcome to another edition of What's New in Surfshark. Let's first talk about that new Linux app update. Surfshark Linux application has been getting a lot of attention this year. I mean, we had that huge update back in May that added the graphical user interface. There were also several updates to improve the compatibility with more Linux distros. And this October, the app also received the 1.2 update, which adds the long requested kill switch feature. As you may know, the way Kill Switch works is that it will automatically disable your internet connection if you accidentally disconnect from the VPN. Again, this can happen by accident or if a VPN server goes down, which doesn't happen very often, but if it does, it's nice to know that your data will not be exposed. This feature can be enabled in the settings, VPN settings menu. Personally, I really like this update since I run the Kill Switch on every device that I have Surfshark on. Also, I have been reading the comments and I know some of you are running distros that are not supported by the app. Hopefully the team can add Flatpak support, which would increase distro compatibility. Next, let's talk about why Surfshark is removing languages from its applications. This includes Arabic, Hindi, Finnish, and Turkish languages. The reason for this is that they are used by less than 1% of users and they make app releases much slower to implement. If you use one of these languages, then the application interface will change to the default English one. Once again, in the long run, it will result in a better experience for everyone. In other news, Surfshark is increasing the requirements for macOS and iOS Surfshark applications. Older operating systems don't get as many security updates and in turn, they become vulnerable to various online threats. I mean, there's a reason why we don't use Windows XP anymore, right? Although I do have to admit, I do feel super nostalgic about it. In fact, we ran a poll on our channel asking you guys whether you would use Windows 7 in 2022, and well, over 75% of you said no. By the way, make sure to subscribe and follow our community section as we run various polls related to cybersecurity and tech daily. Now, back to the update. The Surfshark app on macOS now requires version 10.15 Catalina or later. And the Surfshark iOS app now requires iOS 13 or later. If you are running an older device, this may be a bummer, but it will allow Surfshark devs to add new features faster, improve the quality and stability of the app, and on top of that, make update delivery much better. Also, if you don't feel like upgrading your computer or phone, you still have the option of running the Surfshark browser extension, or running VPN via manual or router connection. I will leave a link in the description to guides on how you can do that. But that's not all the news that the Apple team delivered. A new and exciting feature that allows you to log in with your Google or Apple account is coming with the 3.6.0 update. I'm sure many of us are familiar with this already. If there's a website or an app, they usually have an option to log in with Google, Apple, or some kind of an email service. A good example of this is Twitter. This is an extremely convenient way to log into your account. Just one click and you're in. Although I would still highly encourage the use of two-factor authentication. But either way, the first Surfshark app to roll out this feature is iOS, but it will be coming to other platforms very soon. Another very neat change was made to the Surfshark iOS widget. It now allows you to pause your VPN right from the home screen without having to open the app. And for an even smoother VPN surfing, the auto connect feature is now available when you switch your network to mobile data. So all in all, this is a great update for the Surfshark iOS app. Up next, we need to talk about the Surfshark Windows applications because it had quite a rough time these past few weeks. Many users on Reddit and elsewhere were reporting issues logging into the app and some even not being able to launch it. That being said, the app has been updated to version 4.3.7, which should resolve all of these issues. This means no more problems logging in and the app now running and working much better. If you are still having any issues, remember to send a bug report, which will help the Surfshark devs to fix the issue much faster. These types of reports really help the team to pinpoint the issues since there can be so many different PC configurations. And to finish the episode, let's talk about some of the other news that happened this month. Just like every year, Surfshark released the Digital Quality of Life Index Research for 2022. This is a massive study that includes 117 countries and it ranks them in five pillars that determine their digital quality of life. 
It looks at things like internet affordability, internet quality, e-infrastructure, e-security, and even e-government. Going back to the apps, the Surfshark browser extension for both Chrome and Firefox received the 3.16 update, which helps with connectivity. And last but not least, we have also released a new Surfshark Wave podcast episode. I had a chance to speak with Dave Mass from the Electronic Frontier Foundation, and we spoke about surveillance technology that is rampant in the US. This was super interesting and definitely worth a listen. But that is all for this episode of What's New in Surfshark. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates every month. And if you are curious about setting up a VPN on your TV, then go check out this video here where we made an updated guide for VPN on smart TVs. That's all for me. Take care.